promised um, I've decided to record a video after my life my life update I thought why would I waste a well-made face I might as well spend it on a good recording right but anyway enough pranking around welcome to intimate conversations with Francis O'Brien healing one heart at a time so as promised I'm going to be talking about a new topic today one of my friends actually said, Francis, you spend too much time in your intro. So I'm going to try and work on cutting my intros significantly. So as I said, I'm just going to set my timer because um, I'm working on getting a better camera that will actually help me. <laughs> um, that will help me not cut out or cut off my recordings after a specific period of time. So let's get to it. Today I'm going to be talking about trysts. The other word for a tryst is a secret relationship. So, ooh, secret relationship. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but yeah, just laugh at it. So, um, a lot of us, you know, like I said, I'll always talk about to uh, topics that I can personally relate to. So, a lot of us have found ourselves in secret relationships. Some of us are going to enter relationships that are secretive. Some of us have been in secretive relationships. Or some of us actually are in secret relationships. So, um, and I'm not talking, when I say a secret relationship, I have to be specific with this one. I'm not talking about the kind of relationships where you're keeping it on the low, on the hush, because you don't want people to know, you know, and you know how people are, where you don't want to tell somebody something that's still new and exciting because you don't want people to, you don't want it to get jinxed or you don't want people to jinx it or people to dissuade you. I'm not talking about that. That may be either the good or the bad kind. I'm not talking about those kinds of relationships. Good kind. I'm talking about the really bad kind that you don't want people to find out about. So, um, we are going to talk about... <laughs> you know, the, the, in my life, life update, and I was saying to you that there's a lot of things that I had to sit down and realize about myself and realize and that were, that were put into a light that I wasn't really aware of. This is what birthed this, to this topic. So I'm talking about the kind of relationship where if people, the secretive relationship that if people were to find out, they would judge you or they could condemn you. And you'd have this overwhelming feeling of guilt that oh my god this person knows this about me or you'd have the whispers in the corridor or the whispers in the house or the whispers amongst family and friends that type of secret relationship and a few scriptures came to mind when I was writing this particular um, topic bearing in mind before I get to the scriptures a relationship with someone of the opposite sex is meant to be a good thing it's meant to be a good thing that's what God designed it to be a good thing. It's not supposed to be a bad thing. It's not supposed to be an evil thing. It's also meant to be an oppressive thing. It's not meant to be a selfish thing. It's not meant to be an evil thing. It's meant to be a good and healthy relationship with the opposite sex. And you're meant to, it's meant to help you build companionship with the other person. So when I thought about secret relationships and the things that I've been through, I realized that mm, the ones that I've been in really didn't help me. They really didn't, and I'll get into that part based on the pointers that I'll give later on. So, in math, I'll just give a list of the scriptures. If I do get a chance, perhaps I may add them as pictures. Uh, may God give me the grace to be very creative with my channel. Say amen. Amen. Yeah. So, uh, Matthew 5, verse 15, Luke 8, verse 16. And the one that sticks out for me, or stuck out the most for me, was Mark 4, verse 22. And the word says, For there is nothing which will not be revealed. There's nothing hidden which will not be revealed. Nor has anything, be, anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. A relationship is something that should be a gift and a blessing from God. It is meant to be done his way. It is meant to bring glory to God. A lot of people don't understand when, you know, a lot of motivational speakers or pastors and etc. say your relationship is meant to bring glory to God. Why it's meant to bring glory to God is because you're supposed to showcase what you went through, what you endured, how you brought God into your life versus individuals and then brought the two of you together and how your relationship was ordained by God Almighty. When you find yourself in a relationship where all of these things haven't taken effect, 
that's when you realize that it's not really in a really relationship brought by God. That's why his word says, what God puts together, let no man put asunder. When God puts something together, and that doesn't mean it's going to be 100% perfect because there are going to be trials. You guys are going to learn each other. There's going to be temptation here and there that's going to pull you people apart. But when God puts two people together, nothing on this earth will bring those two people, pull those two people apart except death. That's what he means by that. But a lot of us are not patient enough to wait for God's timing, to wait for God's word, etc., etc. So in Matthew 5, verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. So obviously when God brings two people together, it's something that he is proud of and he wants to showcase. So automatically you become the light of the world because you're a reflection of God's work in your life. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. So when I talk about hidden, there is a difference between being hidden. Like I said, the good kind of relationship is like when you first meet somebody and you're very cautious, you ask God, is this the one? You pray about it, you 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 know you listen to the guiding of the Holy Spirit as to how to handle this new relationship that you're getting into, etc. The same way in the Bible where Noah was hidden in his ark for a specific period of time. Joseph was hidden for a specific period of time. David was hidden for a specific period of time. Moments of solitude, I believe, especially as an individual, are meant to birth really great things from you. And most of us are not willing to go through moments of solitude. That's why I'm actually really happy about the COVID thing, because a lot of us are now put in moments of solitude. You have no choice but to face yourself. No choice. This, is, this, this, this period of COVID and lockdown is what's going to really determine what is important to you. You know, did you enter your marriage for the right reasons? Is it time to separate? Is it time to build? Is it time to strengthen? Is it time to, is, are you getting to a new, realiz re, a new realization of your partner? Are you getting a new love or forming a new love and a, a, a deeper bond with your partner? And you've got nowhere to go. You have to face each other in the house. Do you know what I mean? So um, let's get into it. Most times the reason why things sometimes also have to be brought, brought out into the light is because you get tired of secrecy. The secrets just become so overwhelming. They become a burden and you get so tired of all of that um, overwhelming sensation of secrecy. That's why when God brings two things together, two people together, things, when God brings a thing, one thing, two. <laughs> Woo, Francis, be serious. So when God brings two people together, it's to showcase his power and his love over his children and how perfectly he does his things when we submit to him. So let's get into the pointers straight away or the examples of trysts um, that I wrote in my book. So let's get into it. Don't forget, oh yes, I've got my book. still have it and I think it's almost full. So yeah, I need to get myself a new book. So point number one, an extramarital affair. So we're talking about different kinds of trysts or different types of secret relationships. So an extramarital affair and for obvious reasons. Um, the thing, the reason why you'd keep your relationship with somebody who is in a marriage or in a, who's in a married relationship is because you are coming, you know what you're doing is wrong. Let's call it a spade a spade. You know what you're doing is wrong. You are coming between two people that have made a covenant. You as the outsider or the third person, it has nothing to do with you if this person went into that marriage for their own selfish reasons. When there is life and death in the power of the tongue, if that person opened their mouth with deceptive or honest reasons, you are not there and you should play no part in it. So if you find yourself in that, that's not something you're going to openly come out in public and say, oh yes, I'm having a relationship with a married person. But given the times that we live in, some people are just so crass and they don't care that they are in relationships with married people. Married people are actually even coming out and not caring that they're having extramarital affairs. So these are the type of secret relationships. If you've got any conscience at all, I think you really wouldn't be okay with having a relationship with a married man or a married woman. And the thing is, the reason why, I do apologize for that, the reason why a lot of people don't talk about um, or rather get into secret relationships is because it's either financial gain, it is sexual benefits, but it's, it's, it's always for sex, for selfish reasons. It's always what you want to get out of it or what the other person is going to get from you. So in Galatians 5 verse 24, it says, goodness promotes growth 
enjoyment and creativity. Evil brings stagnation, isolation, unpleasantness and apathy. And how true is this verse? Because I was asking God, please give me Bible verses that will also reflect um, when you're in a secret relationship. Another verse, Bible verse I can give you is from Romans 7 verse 18. As a whole, nothing good comes out of evil. And let's be honest, an extramarital affair is being evil. You are really being evil. You as a married person and you as a third person. I'm not even going to mince my words about it. It's being very evil when you find yourself in those kinds of relationships. Jealousy and resentment will build toward the other woman. So I'm coming from the aspect of you as a woman, as an outsider, um, or even you as a wife. You are going to obviously have feelings of jealousy and resentment, particularly if your husband, if the husband gives you a negative report about his wife. So say, for instance, you're in a relationship, the husband comes to you. As I said earlier on, you were not there when this person either made it a vow from the truth or from a lie. You were not there. So if the husband is the one who keeps coming to you and say, hey, my wife and hey, my wife did this, hey, my wife did this, hey, my wife did this, you must be very careful. So when this man comes reporting, you must be very careful what you listen to, what you take into your spirit. First of all, you're not a counselor. And even if you are by profession, really, the point is you're still being intimate with your client, which I believe it's really unethical. I'm not even going to go into that. But the thing is, when you are the, 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 the girlfriend, you know, of this married man, and you're listening to this report, the question you'll be having in your mind constantly is, but if you, if you have problems with this woman, then why aren't you leaving her? And that is a million dollar question. You should be asking yourself all the time. Why isn't this man leaving this woman if he doesn't love her? Why is, it he, why is he always coming to me to report this woman's bad behavior or her attitude or whatever it is to me? But at the end of the day, he's still not leaving her. He still goes back to her. The wife's resentment is birthed from the husband, her husband, giving another woman attention. That's why it's an evil thing. It's just an evil, convoluted get-together. And it should not be like that. And in this woman, she's going to have feelings of inadequacy, feeling of her not being beautiful, feelings of her not being enough are birthed from a husband's extramarital affair. And it, it, you as the woman on the outside, or as the man on the other side sleeping with a married woman, is this what you really want? Some people are so wicked and selfish in the sense that they're like, I don't care. Look, they know what they're doing and I'm just in it to get by one. That's why I said in the beginning, it always comes from a selfish perspective and a selfish point of view. You are not supposed to get into someone's marital relationship and think that you're going to be a pacifier. It is not your job, it is God's job. If God put those two people together, then he is going to fix it if those two people are willing to get together. The problem that we do when we are in relationships as married people is to find help from outside and bring those problems inside thinking they're going to solve the current problem. Do you already hear that debacle? Point number two of a secret, a secret tryst, or rather of a type of tryst. Dating someone significantly older or younger than you. Now, this one is a difficult one because in the case of a woman, if you are dating a guy younger than you, you're seen as a cougar. If you're an older guy dating a younger woman, you're seen as a sugar daddy. And both parties have got reasons for having these kinds of relationships. Now, the reason, the reason why it's a tryst is because if you're an older woman with a younger man, everybody is going to assume, oh my gosh, Either she's at her sexual peak and she's looking for a younger guy that is going to cope with her sexual peak. Um, this is obviously hoping that the woman is single. And if it's a, sh a younger guy with an older woman, it's going to be seen as, yes, it's a conquest. I know how to be with an older woman. You know what I mean? Or he's also got material gain. As I said, these types of relationships always are stemmed from a point of selfishness. Right. And if it's an older man, the girl has probably got daddy issues and she's seeing him as her sugar daddy that is going to take care of all the things in her life, materialistic, that her daddy never did for her. So it's always material, like materialistic gain. Or the older man is in his sexual prime and he's looking for somebody young that can deal or handle his um, libido. So it's always a point of selfishness. So 
that kind of relationship would definitely be a tryst because you're not comfortable with people knowing that you're dating a person significantly older or younger than you. So that's the second type of a secretive relationship. The third kind is when a friend is dating their friend's sibling. Now with this one there, it's definitely going to be difficult when you know that your friend is dating when you know that when you get to find out rather that your, your your friend is dating your brother or your sister the reason why is because sometimes as friends we confess our really sordid secrets to each other so we kind of formulate an opinion about how good or bad our friend really is but when that friend or you know friend comes close to our home space meaning or close to our family and is forming a romantic relationship with one of our loved ones we begin to have our walls up and think, no, 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 you, you cannot, the person that I know you to be, you are not good enough for my brother, which as a, or my sister, which is, as a result now creates a lot of fighting, um, you know, an animosity between friends and that relationship can potentially break up that friendship of what, 5, 10, 15 years. So here's a perfect scenario. You've got two guys, they're friends, they've been friends since high school. And one of the guys has got a really beautiful young sister. And he knows, and, the, and the, the brother's friend, you know, has been the kind, maybe of the playboy that has really moved around all the girls. And guys generally talk about their conquests. So next thing, when this guy finds out, when the brother finds out that his friend is having a relationship with his younger, younger sister, he sees it as a betrayal. So that's another type of a secretive relationship. Because it's like, I know you, I know the kind of person that you are. Why would you have a relationship with my sister? You know? And it's really bad because now your friend is going to ask the brother, you know, the friend will ask the brother that, but what kind of friend do you think I am? I'm a change man, which is so difficult to convince your friend that you've changed when they've seen your history. That's why that kind of relationship automatically falls under the bracket of a tryst. It's very difficult to date a friend's sibling. It's very difficult. You'd rather keep it under wraps and, or you'd rather really squash whatever feelings you ever had. And you know what? Some good relationships have really been formed with those kinds of relationships um, of siblings dating their, 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 their siblings' friends. That type of thing, if you get what I'm saying. So we would keep that kind of a relationship a secret. So let's get into trust number four, or secret relationship number four. Here's a classic of a secretive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> friends dating their friends' parents. <laughs> or maybe aunt or uncle or whatever it is. You know this one is really difficult, right? It's really, really painful. There is nothing as painful as knowing that your parent is being intimate with your friend. You feel betrayed by your parent and your friend, the two people that you care about the most, especially your parent. You feel like you've been made a fool. You feel like your friend is making a fool out of your parent. And just that age gap in itself is extremely fast. That's why you would keep that under wraps. Understandably, I don't even think that you, I need to expantiate on that. Let me just see what I wrote. Exactly, I left it at that. Trust is going to be broken between friend and parent and some lines just shouldn't be crossed. They shouldn't be crossed. So if a, you know, if a male your friend or a guy friend has a, you know, a, a kind of interest in the mother of his friend, this is where the mother also should be an adult. Really, a woman, if you must be a cougar, do you have to be a cougar with your son or your daughter's best friend? Really? That's why I said there are some lines that shouldn't be crossed because trust is going to be broken in such a way that you can, it, it, it can almost be irreparable and you have to lose either one and most times you will end up losing your friend because you can't really choose your parents. Sometimes in this instance, I'm sure you really wish you would, but you wouldn't be able to choose your parent. So that is a example number four of a tryst um, or a secret relationship. Number five, a very interesting one, which a lot of people kind of have mixed feelings towards. And this is friends 
Um, okay, now I'll, I'll get to that one first, which is really interesting. So this one is another kind of twist one which I don't like. Friends having affairs with their friends' spouses. So in essence, swinging. Swinging. If you don't know what swinging is, swinging is like when couples go to a party and then they mix up keys and then whoever picks up the key, one, one, one partner of that couple picks up somebody else's keys and a bowl of keys from everybody else in their party. If I'm a woman and I pick up car keys, whoever those car keys, whatever couple those car keys belong to, I, as a woman, I obviously go with the man. That's what I mean. So, friends having relationships with their friends' spouses, if it was consensual, honestly, it's a very twisted thing. It's very sick. I think swinging is really nasty. It's... I'm not even going to go on a Christian perspective. I think just from a moral point of view, it's just nasty. If I invite you to come to my house and I've got my husband, and the, the, the two of us, or the, the four of us are staring at each, at each other, but I'm looking at my friend, you know, at my husband's friend, the guy, you know, thinking about how great he was in a sack whenever we met, and my friend's and our friend's wife is looking at my husband like he is a heartthrob. I think it's just twisted, and you know what? These are things that actually happen in this world, and it's really nasty. If you're doing it, please can you stop? Not only is it immoral, but that is such a grave sin because the Bible does say that the great one of the greatest sins is the one that you commit is a sexual sin because you commit a sin against your body, and as far as I'm concerned. Your body is a temple, which is what the Bible says as well. So, again, a breach of trust and loyalty and confidence is going to be involved in this particular secretive relationship. Sometimes, sometimes, it's not even a swinging thing. Sometimes, I may be with my husband, and my husband's friend just comes, and he wants to have, you know, he starts making moves and passes at me. Me, who is married, it is up to me to really set that foundation and that boundary to say, you know what, dude, this is not going to fly. This is not going to fly. I apologize. This is not going to fly. And you know what? I think I am going to tell my husband if you continue pursuing me. I apologize. I had to answer a call really quickly. And they very rude. They actually hung up. Do you know how annoying that is when you're recording? So, um, I think I've even lost my chain of thought. But I think I was on the point where my it's up to me to make up to to really draw the line and say you know what if you cross this line I really am going to tell my husband, which in actual fact is they've actually crossed the line. By right, woman, you're supposed to tell your husband that you know what this is what your friend did. Husbands, please trust your wives to know that they didn't do anything in the perfect scenario. They didn't do anything to encourage their friend to make a pass at your wife. So don't get there and now start blasting your wife to say, yeah, what did you do and stuff like that. No, that's really the wrong approach. Right, and that is tryst number five. Tryst number six. Now that's it, this is the interesting one. It's just relationships with bosses. Male or female. I have heard of both versions. So this is the ever, as I wrote it here, the ever debated topic that never seems to reach a point of agreement. Everybody is of the shared opinion that not only is it unethical, but it is doomed right from the very start. Why is it doomed? Perfect scenario, I'll always start with a male and a female relationship. So the boss is male and the, the chick is female. So if, if I'm having a relationship with my boss, the strange thing is that if I end it and I begin to have another relationship with an office staff member, my boss could potentially descend on me with an extra workload, obviously because of dealing with his jealousy of how he treated me. I mean, of how I ended the relationship, so to speak, so, you know, or he could set a trap for me and potentially and actually get me fired. So that's why I said it's one of those relationships, I do apologize, my neighbor is playing music really loud. Here's the other thing. The funny thing is, oh, here's, I have to mention this. During the lockdown, there were so many days that were so quiet and I could have recorded on those days. The very day that I decide to whip up my camera and record, that's when my neighbor decides to be the loudest. You know the devil, eh? The devil is a liar. I will record and I will finish this recording. Mm, mm, okay. 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 Right, let's move on. And then um, bosses fear also 
of getting into a relationship with their employees is that there's a fear that a sexual harassment claim may be made towards the bosses. That's why they, you know, wouldn't make passes at their employees. Because, you know, you never really know. You may think that you know your employee and think, no, she's not that kind of chick. But the moment you get into that relationship, you realize that, you know what, she actually is that type of chick and she will get you into trouble. Or you find that maybe the boss has now lost interest in his office flus um, or floozy and he gets on, he moves on to another one because I, as the employee that's being dumped, I will get jealous and I will start laying a sexual harass claims on this man. So it, it's doomed from the start. No one can really ever win. The only way I feel that this, can, this kind of relationship can thrive is when the employee or the boss, if you're the owner of the company, leaves that company. Literally, legit, that's the only way that relationship can really stand. I'm not working under you, you don't see my comings and my goings, you don't see if anybody or secret admirer drops flowers off at my desk, that type of thing. You know what I mean? Same with a young guy and an older woman who's a boss. I mean, other guys in his office block or the same office space could have a crush on their female boss and now there's a competition. Now that woman, not only does she come across as a cougar, but she comes across as very cheap as a boss. It's very difficult to issue instructions to the employee you are bedding. That's why this relationship, they say, is doomed from the start. If the employee is going to leave, that relationship probably has a chance of survival. If not, and if both of them are stuck there. It's a matter of time, baby. It's a matter of time. Right, the final um, example of a tryst or a secret relationship is relationships that are formed for business progression. This is self-explanatory. Sad as it may be, both men and women are guilty of this. So say for instance, I know maybe the mayor of a town or I know the CEO of a specific company and I'm looking for a tender or I'm looking for um, you know a project that I want awarded to me or whatever it is. I will actually make sexual advances towards that person and have and make sure that they award me the contract, award me the project, give me the raise, give me the um the the the, the what you call this the, the 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 promotion. So as I said with these relationships, there's always a selfish root. There's a selfish foundation of these kinds of relationships. Some people keep these relationships secretly, but a secret. But lately, they are brought out brought out into the open so as to blindsight the target. What I meant by that is, if I, I'll give the example of the mayor again. So if I know the mayor of this town, all right, and um, I get into a relationship with him, but the only reason, and maybe he's like this really unattractive oak, nothing that I would ever be caught alive with, I'm gonna say dead with. <laughs> I find that funny. So, and you know, uh, Obviously, people would be like, people close to him would be like, are you sure this chick is coming to you because she genuinely loves you or there's something that she wants from you? Now, what I would do is I would literally stand on a loudspeaker, for lack of better words, and proclaim and declare that relationship and be public about it to blindside this mayor from thinking that I'm using him to get, so, you know, to get what I, what is, whatever it is that I want. So that's how you blindside your target. And this could go with anything. It could go with your promotion, it could go with a salary increase, or it could go with anything that you want. Selfish reasons, obviously. So I would obviously be intimate with this person. And then if I see that the person is catching a bit of wind that I'm, you know, I'm actually doing something or that they're on to me in terms of my purpose, I would not declare post on social media, take pictures, secretive messages or whatever the case is. Perhaps if it's in the office and I'm having a relationship with my boss, perhaps I'll whip him a kiss straight, you know, there and there or whatever the case is. But it's at the end of the day, it's still, those that aren't willing to come out with it, obviously, for the purposes of this video, I'm talking about trust, so you'd hide this kind of thing, because one, maybe that person in a position of power is also married, so they can't be seen, again, extramarital affair, so they can't be seen as having a relationship with somebody else. If they're not married, you know, and they realize that this person's only getting with them because they can get secret, um, you know, projects or whatever the case is. <sighs> I tell you, it will never end well most of the time. So even if you get that tender or whatever, it's always fleeting, it's temporary. 
you need some kind of sustenance. Some people think, okay, if I just get this contract, one contract, then that's it. I'm made for life. And that's not the right way to treat somebody. It's not the right. That person's a human being. But, as I wrote here, so many of these relationships I've listed are rampant lately and have ruined the lives of both parties and everyone that is dragged around both parties unknowingly. And if it hasn't exploded, it is going to explode. That is a given. It is going to explode. So, I know there's different kinds of um, trysts or secret relationships that I haven't mentioned here. That is all I have for today. Day. Okay, focus for answers. Ultimately, the reason why I wrote this is because, like I said earlier on, I found myself in, you know, in secret relationships where, uh, you know, you don't want to be seen with this person or you can't, not, not that you don't want to be seen to, with this person, but you can't be seen with this person because one, two and three is going to happen. And you're aware and but when the two of you are together it feels so magical it feels like it's the right thing but you can never be seen together in public it's not a good thing it's not a good relationship you're lying to both of yourselves and in most cases one party always has a selfish reason one party always has a selfish reason so family that brings me to a wrap and a conclusion of today's topic which is types of trysts or types of secret relationships. I hope you enjoyed this topic with me. As I said, I'm going to try and work on reducing the time that I take in recording my videos. So I hope that this is going to be exciting for you. Don't forget to drop a comment in the description section below, in the comment section below. I'll put my email address if you'd like to reach out to me. And as always, I wish you peace, love, and happiness. So wherever you are in the world, be blessed, stay blessed, always. This is Intimate Conversations with Francis O'Brien, healing one heart at a time. Till we meet again. <laughs>